She was doing good. Amen. The book of Acts, chapter number one, please. The book of Acts, chapter number one, this past Lord's, excuse me, Wednesday night, we begin to look at what the definition of the gospel was by the Holy Ghost inspiring the physician Luke. According to Colossians chapter 4, Paul begins to list out those who were, quote, of the circumcision in verse number 11, and Luke's name's not in it. But when you get down to verse 14 of chapter 4 of Colossians, he says, and Luke, the beloved physician. Luke was not an apostle. When you name the apostles, you don't say Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are the gospels. But Luke was so inspired and so moved and so overcome by the gospel that he wrote two letters to one man named Theophilus, and you call those the book of Luke and the book of Acts. So you have two glorious books in your Bible that came from a man that's so thrilled over what Jesus Christ did and taught that his heart was flamed, he had to get it out. So he wrote it all down and sent it to his friend Theophilus. God is amazing. He got that letter and put it in the Bible. Those letters and put it in the Bible. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Acts chapter 1 and verse 1. And he, came, he comes up with the best definition of the gospel I've ever heard. The former treatise, that is the former letter that I wrote, that is the book of Luke, the former account, same word, Matthew 18, 23, the former preaching, Colossians 1, 18, the former word, John 1, 1 and 14, in the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, same word, treatise. So what he wrote in a treatise was what God sent in incarnation. He began to understand that the gospel is not some facts about Jesus. The gospel is Jesus revealed to your heart by the Holy Ghost. I, I've, I said it myself, and I've heard people say it. I don't say it anymore. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, 1 Corinthians 15. No, that ain't the gospel. Those are facts contained in the gospel that we certainly believe, but those things are not the gospel I was believing that when I was a lost church member for seven years. I found out that the difference between being a lost church member and being born again was coming to know Jesus Christ. Yes. And only the gospel can save you. So coming to know Jesus Christ is the gospel of our salvation. This then is eternal life that they may know, know thee. Knowing God. All right. The former treatise, that is the book of Luke, which I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both, what? So he says the whole book of Luke is about one thing. What Jesus did, he said what he said he did, and we know the book of Luke as one of the four gospels. gospels. So the definition for the gospel under the anointed inspiration of the Holy Spirit is that which Jesus did and taught until the day in which he was taken up. Did you just read by two terms of time? Two terms, two words that give you something to do with the timing of this thing? The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began First word in verse 2, until. until. When did he start it? And when did he end it? I ain't going to tell you. That's another message. <laughs> but there's a term of time here that he began both to do and to teach until. If you ever start it, you got to do it until. When did he stop it? Well, he really ain't stopped it yet. He's still doing it through the Holy Spirit that he sent to us. Until the day in which he was taken up. Dear soul, you'll still be talking about the gospel and witnessing if you ever 
have it get a hold of you until you die. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them, that's doing something, he's still doing it at the time between his resurrection and his ascension. He was being seen of them, showing himself alive by many infallible proofs. He was doing something. Forty days. And speaking, he was teaching something. And speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them. There's some more speaking. So he's still doing and teaching. This is a principle of Christ's character. This is a principle of the true church. This is that which you don't have to come to church on, the, uh, uh, on, every, for, uh, on every Thursday night to the church basement to get uh, uh, the new converts class to teach you how to be a Christian. You don't have to teach anybody how to be a Christian because it don't come by education. It don't come by illumination. It comes by revelation and that from God alone. They shall all be taught of God. You have the unction in you and you know all things. 1 John 2.20. 1 John 2.27. So that you need not that any man teach you. You say, Brother Gene, what are we doing here if I need not any man teach you? You need the preaching of the word for the washing of water. There is nothing that washes your soul like the, like the preaching of the word uh, is, uh, does. Excuse me. In comparison, though, to what God has shown you, it is called, quote, unquote, the foolishness of preaching in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 21. But God hath chosen by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. I can't give you belief. I can't make you believe. I can't give you faith. Only God can do that. But that faith will lead you to a source, to a voice, to a clover patch of grace where the sheep can graze and get fed and get instructed and get nourished and get cleansed in their souls as they continue on walking through this world. Oh, my soul. What a relationship the church has to the revelation of the gospel. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. What is, who is the promise of the Father? Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Amen. Which, saith he, ye have heard of me. This is the pattern of the true church. I want to show you this morning the difference between the harlot church, the Bible calls it the whore church, and the true bride of Christ. And it can be seen in this simple phrase, to do and teach. In the book of Matthew chapter number 5, beginning with verse number 17, the Lord taught this. Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 17. When you get saved, you have to retrain your brain. And the first two words that Jesus says is don't be thinking this anymore. So start retraining your brain. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. There's some people that's got grace so great they can live like the devil and still go to heaven. But Jesus said, that ain't me. We call that, well, if you want a big old jawbreaker word, antinomianism. Anti, you know what that means. It's against. Nomia, law. There are those who say, well, we're saved by grace, so I just live any way I want to. I'm saved. I'm elect. I'm, I'm in. So I don't have any sanctification, and I don't want to hear anybody preaching on progressive sanctification. Well, get away from me because I need to hear it. Think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Christ will fulfill the law in your feet. 
in your hands, in your brain, in your face. He will, he, will, he will fulfill the law of God in your taste buds. Everything that you need to stand before God perfectly, it will be in Christ. But he will act that out in you. Amen. Listen. For verily, truly, surely, I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be You turn that word around, feel full. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be feel full. It ain't, there ain't nothing going to be lacking. Listen, now let's keep reading. Whosoever, next word, therefore, because of what I just said, whosoever shall break one of these least commandments and shall, next word, teach. Breaking the commandment would be something that you do. And then you will begin to teach other men, well, you know, here, come on, get into this sin with me. They'll call it a liberty. They won't call it sin. Come on, enjoy this liberty with me. We're saved by grace. Folks, I've seen whole churches lose their testimony because of that kind of stuff. So they begin, they begin to do that is to break one of the least commandments. And then they begin, you can't help it. It comes out of their mouth. They begin to teach men. So he shall be called, read me down to the snake eyes. He shall be called the, the least in the kingdom of heaven. God said, listen, I don't care what your criteria is for what a sinner is. Well, he's a sinner. He spit on the sidewalk. Whatever your criteria is, if it ain't this, you don't have the right criteria for what the definition of sin. God said the least in the kingdom of heaven. You do know that includes folks who are religious but lost, don't you? Yeah. Jesus is king over everything. Now listen, he's, he's king over the tares and the wheat. Listen, but whosoever shall, three words. Woe, do and teach. Isn't that what? Luke said over there in Acts chapter 1, verse 1, the definition of the entire gospel of Luke is all that Jesus began both to do, do and teach. And what is Jesus saying right here? Whosoever shall do and teach, do and teach them, the same shall be called what? Great. Great in the kingdom of heaven. Dear soul, let me tell you something. It's still wrong to kill. It's still wrong to steal. Every law God ever established is, is good. Paul said there ain't nothing wrong with the law. The law is just and good and holy. Problem with the law is me. I can't keep it. But the Lord came in and is keeping it in and for and through me. Isn't that good? I still have a battle with it. My flesh said, I won't do that. My spiritual man said, you're going to do it because we're going to do it for the glory of God. 1 John 2, 6. Anybody can read that? 1 John 2, 6. I tried to quote it Wednesday night, and I got my tongue wrapped around my eye teeth, and I couldn't see what I was saying. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 6. He that saith, if a Christian, if a religionist testifies that he, the Christian, the, the religionist abides in Christ. All right, here is the rest of the story. If you say, if I say I abide in Christ, then God expects me to walk as Christ walked. No less. I don't mean walk as good as anybody else has ever walked in Christendom. I mean as perfect as Christ walked. You say, I can't do that right. Sinai, the law saying thou shalt be perfect, will always drive you to Calvary where you will have to see that it's not what, uh, 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 listen, what you do, but it's what Jesus did for you. Sinai always uh, makes you say, I can't, 
but at Calvary says, Jesus said, I did. And then you come and bow and worship and say, I receive what he did on my behalf. And now he will be implanted in me and the character of Jesus Christ will be my character. And I will begin to do and teach that which he hath done and taught. Right? Makes sense, don't it? So those who are least in the kingdom are those who say and do not. The greatest in the kingdom, and these, this is the true church, are those who do what they say and say what they do. Isn't that amazing? Go straight to Matthew 23. We want to compare the true church with the harlot church. Matthew 23. We got a problem. You can't just you can't just go and, and destroy all religion. The Lord said, you know, Paul said, well, let me go to Paul first. Paul said, uh, some preach the gospel out of spite and some of them out of hate because they hate me. But you know what he said? I wish all men preached the gospel. And, 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 and Jesus said those who are not directly and diametrically opposed to us are for us. God can even use a crooked stick to draw a straight line. But you got to understand this, so you can't pattern yourself after them. And, and after you have preached to others, you yourself become a castaway because you let your flesh go and you begin not to do, but just kept on trying to teach. But the line of your teaching will follow the line of your doing. That's the truth. Listen, Matthew 23, 1. Then spake Jesus to the multitudes and to his disciples. And I guarantee you they were scribes and Pharisees standing right there monitoring everything he was saying. And he told on them. He said, boys, these scribes and Pharisees, they sit in Moses' seat. And all they do is in verse 6, they love the uppermost rooms. They love the chief seats. You know, uh, I don't ever tell anybody I'm a preacher. If they don't know I'm a Christian by how I act, uh, I ain't just in there to get my 10% discount. And I ain't there. For, I'm, not, I'm not here to argue with anybody. And I'm not here to debate anybody. If they want to hear the gospel, all they got to do is punch my button, and I've got plenty of them. Dear soul, I'll let them know about Jesus. But I ain't around here trying to say, oh, I'm a pastor. you got to give me special. No, man. Listen. They sit in Moses' seat. All right. Now listen to this. This is wisdom beyond my comprehension. All, therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that, three words, If you will even put the antinomian preaching of the harlot church and those who are least in the kingdom of heaven into practice, it will work. That, observe and do. I don't care if a snake says it or a jackass says it or a rooster says it. Dear soul, if God is, is having his word spoken through some unholy vessel, it's still the word of God, and we ought to do it. 90-something percent of my Christian life I spent under the authority and under the influence of the harlot church. I didn't come to true religion until I come to have to pastor my own soul. But you know what? God didn't throw out the baby with the bathwater. I learned a lot of stuff back then. And I still got it. But it didn't come through. It didn't come from them. It might have come through them, but it didn't come from them. It came from God. And this old, if I am dying of thirst and you got water in a tin can, I'll, I'll drink it. I'll take it. It don't have to be a golden chalice. If you got water, bless God, I'll take it. My soul is at stake. Listen, 
All, therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe. They've got the authority in Moses' seat, but they don't have the goods. That observe and do, but do not. Whatever you do, do not ye after what? Their works. Their works. Why? Finish it out. That'll get your soul into hell quicker than anything I know. You'll wind up getting off the bus and, 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 and saying, Hey, Lord, we have done many wonderful works in thy name. And if, you, if you follow that, and, the, and Jesus will say, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. What do you mean all we've been doing? Going to church and passing out tracts and, and witnessing and all that stuff. He said, That's work of iniquity without the Holy Ghost. That's at least in the kingdom work. That, that's abomination work. My work is a work of doing and saying. And he said, depart from me, ye that work iniquity, for I never knew you. Dear soul, the true church is very obviously noted by what the definition of the gospel is in Luke chapter, excuse me, Acts, Acts chapter 1 and verse number 1. Isn't that something? Titus 1.16. Titus 1.16. 1, Find the Hebrew, the book of Hebrews and back up a book. Back up a couple of books. Titus chapter 1 and verse 16. You took too long. I'm going to read 15 now. Titus 1, 15, 16. Unto the pure, all things are pure. You know, they say something in public and other people are snickering and laugh. And they don't even know why the other people are snickering and laughing. But here's, here's why they are. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. You ever seen anybody that everything you say they make something nasty out of it? I'm so tired of, 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 of filthiness. I'm so tired of lewdness. Aren't you? I'm so tired of nastiness. I get sick of it. That's one way you can tell they, their heart's not pure. Listen, unto the pure are all things pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. Now listen, what's their problem? Well, I don't need to call Dr. Field. Here it is. They profess that they know God, but two words. In works they, uh-oh, here we are again, saying, but doing not. And in fact, that's what it's going to say. In works, they deny him being abominable. God said these people are abominable. The, their works are filthy rags. They, 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 they are works of iniquity. But they went to church and they cleaned up good and they, they put a, a tithe check in and, and, and they, were, they were moral people outwardly. But God knows the heart. He said, if you're saying and not doing, you're of the whole church. Nobody in the true church says and does not because the true church lives with the righteousness of God in them. And the righteousness of God, whether it's stuck in you or in me or in whether it's in the breast of Simon Peter or Jesus Christ himself, it always does the same thing. It does and teaches. Amen. 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 Listen. They profess that they know God, but the problem is in works they deny him being abominable and disobedient and unto every good. Two words. Mm. You see that little phrase in Acts chapter 1 verse 1 is powerful, isn't it? You get to running that thing out, and you get to see, hey, he just defined the character of God in incarnation. WWJD, okay, let's go with that. Does anybody don't know what WWJD is? Stick in it. Yeah, it don't mean what would Gene do. And by the way, you don't spell it with a J in here. What would Jesus do? Well, I know what he would do. He's going to act according to his character. And his character is God. 
If you've seen me, Philip, you've seen the Father. For I and the Father are one. So the character of God in incarnation is the same character of God in regeneration. You didn't get some Baptist basement, Dale uh, Bakery, second kind of salvation. God gave you the righteousness of God imputed to you because he imputed your sin to Christ. You got the same righteousness that Christ has got sitting on the throne. And it works. So everybody that says but doesn't do, that ain't God living in them. They are abominable. They are disobedient. And to every good work, they are reprobate. That's what God's word says. While we're over in this portion of the scripture, James chapter 1. James chapter 1. In verse 21, it tells you what to lay aside. And it says, lay aside the abundance of naughtiness. Naughtiness. Oh, it's just a cute little joke. No, it ain't. It's an abomination to God. We just read it. Wherefore, lay aside, lay apart all filthiness and abundance of naughtiness and receive with meekness the implanted word. Is anybody going to have a garden this year? I already had a garden of pollen. I had a good, good crop of pollen. How'd y'all do? <laughs> well, if you put seed in the ground, what do you expect? For it to come up. Yeah, for God rain on it, sunshine on it, it come up, right? You're expecting to get something out of it. Well, God said if you take the engrafted word, that is the implanted word, that is the word rooted and grafted into your heart. It is able to save your souls. So that word of God, the gospel, brings you to a place of Christ likeness. And would you believe what the next verse says? Would you read James 1.22 so you won't think I'm making this up? You are still like there was back there in Titus 1, 15 and 16 with that naughtiness, with that impurity, with that defiled heart saying but doing not unless you're truly born again. And the only way to tell whether you're born again, fill in the blanks, but be ye blank of the word. See, if you're not doing that which Christ did, and you don't have to, you don't you don't you don't have to go to some study course to find out WWJD. What would Jesus do, dear soul? If the Holy Ghost is in you, He'll tell you this is the way. Walk ye therein. Now, you, me and my flesh and and that spiritual man, we go round and round a lot of times. And you're going to have that problem. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. spirit. And these things are contrary the one to another. They always button heads. You're going, to have, you're going to have problems with it, but your spiritual man, that which is born of God, believe it now, sinneth not. So this is absolute. If you are a doer of the word, you are in the true church and Christ is dwelling in you because you can't do it without him. For without me, you can do John 15, 5. Nothing. Listen. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers, period. No, not, you're supposed to hear, but not hearers only. If you are only a hearer, and you even wind up as Dr. Muckety Muck sitting in Moses' seat. 
And you are the pastor of the First Baptist Church of Jerusalem. It don't make any difference. If you are just saying and not doing, then what happens to you? The last phrase in John, James 1.22. You don't need the devil. You don't need a false uh, apostle. You don't need demons. You don't need some situation in life make you bitter. You'll do it to yourself. This is dangerous. Don't get in this unless you intend to do what you say and say what you do and know that you can't do it except Christ do it in you. That's salvation. Depending on God for everything. And if you see the slightest bit of saying and doing not, you better get after it like a duck after a June bug and say, I'm pulling the roots of that thing out of me because I'm not going to hell after I've gone through all this. I'm going to, I'm going to live for the glory of God. Listen, be, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. Now listen. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, here we go, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a mirror. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway immediately he forgetteth what manner of man he was. Now you're on the way to on the road to self-deception. The gospel is supposed to so stick with you that their soul, you can't get away from it. It may be a month from now, a week from now, and you say, you know what? I remember when God told us this, that, and the other, and I want to find out, and I'm going to go back and read that again. It'll stick with you. But harlot religion that's the reason they wanted entertainment because preaching to them don't last till they get out the door. The only thing they're interested in when they get out the door, where we're going to go eat. Ain't nobody talking about Jesus. Did anybody hear what the score was last night on the ball game? What? You see, you're already on the road to being uh, uh, a deceiver of your own self, deceiving your own selves by hearing only and not doing. You, yes, for a moment, the gospel will show you what you look like, tear and wheat alike. It will evidence to you the mind of God, and it will bring you to a place, dear soul, to where you say, my soul is that what I look like to God. But you can overcome that because as soon as you get out the door, peek, turn on the radio and say, hey, what was the score for the Braves last night? You know, And you, and you start putting it out of your mind. So what you're doing is learning how to deceive yourself. It would be better for you not to come sit under the gospel if you're going to use it to deceive yourself for the latter end is worse than the beginning, Peter said. Come on. I'm talking about the true church. Now, folks, if you got Jesus, he's going to do all this for you, and he's going to do it in you, and he's going to do it through you. But if you ain't doing it, you ain't got Jesus. I'm trying to be honest with you today. Listen, I like verse 25. Brother Gene, hurry up and get on to something positive. Okay, verse 25. But, well, that sounds like negative. But, well, wait a minute. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty... Now, that's Christ's gospel. I don't care what you say. That's the gospel of Christ. The perfect law of liberty. You know what? In Jesus, I can do anything I want to. You know why? Because i got a new want to. That's right. God give me a new want to. Old things passed away. Bless God, Brother Mike, all things became new. And I don't want to do that stuff anymore. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth Therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, why? Because he wants to put it in practice. Amen. Now let's see, what did he say? Put the red wire on the, 
the this lead and put the black wire. What was that he said? You want the word to come back and tell you because you're going to do it. And, and, you know, you're trying to learn uh, some steps, and you put that thing down on the floor, and it's got, okay, step here, and there's a footprint over there, step there. You want to see the pattern yeah. so you'll know how to walk. Yeah. Listen, whosoever looketh into the gospel and continueth therein, he will not be a forgetful hearer because he wants to do it. But a doer of the work, this man shall be Blessed in his deed. Now, it has a terrible verse in verse 26, and I would rather, if you don't mind, you read it yourself. If you would, would you just read verse James 1:26 out loud for me? Is that God's word? Do we all believe it is God's word? Don't nod your head. Don't move. Don't blink your eyes. I ain't trying to get you in trouble. Are you going to do it? Is this just another one of them old sermons, old gene breed, we got to tolerate till we can get out here and go eat? Or are you going to do it? You just determine right then whether you're going to wind up in hell or not. Is it God's word? Is it God's way? Is it God's work? Will Jesus do it in you? Is Jesus still doing this through all of his church? Yes or no? Did he really say that you are a blessed man if you do what he says? Did he say that you are the least in the kingdom if you don't do what he says? Settle it. The question before us is, are we going to do it? Heaven or hell? Heaven or hell set before you right there. Well, I'm a nice little person. I've always tried to help those people. Who... You're deceiving yourself. And you're getting good at it. And you're going to be so good at it that when you get to heaven, you're going to expect God to say, Welcome, thou good and faithful servant, when he says, Instead, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I couldn't believe God ever said that about me because I was... Yeah, that's your problem. You're deceiving yourself. How do you deceive yourself? By saying the Bible and not doing the Bible. Are you not serious about your soul? You can't get a person to be serious about their soul if they're not serious about their soul. But bless God, if they hang around, stay hang around me long, I'm going to tell them about it. Then they can do what they want to, but the blood won't be on my hands. I will have told them what God said. And that's what I'm trying to do today. That's all I'm trying to do t today. Romans 1, 16. Well, I know that. I quote that all the time. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Turn off the, you know, Mr. Great You. Let's look at this thing. You can get everybody to quote Romans 1, 16, but you can't get nobody to tell you what Romans 1, 17 says. For I am not ashamed of the what? Gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. The gospel don't mess around. It don't make no junk. It don't have no miscarriages. It don't, listen, it never fails. Everyone that believeth the gospel of Jesus Christ, God with that power saves them. If you believe, you shall not perish, but have everlasting life. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Condemned already. Listen. To the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. Here we go. From faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. We read this past Wednesday night, Luke 1, 1 through 4. And we said, Luke, how'd you get it? And he said, them fellas preached it to me. Well, what happened to you? I believed on it. After you believed on it, what did you do? I started telling Theophilus about it. 
God's living faith of receiving the word of God as the word of God. It is done by faith. A man of faith preaches the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and while you're hearing it, God grants you faith and with your quickened heart, you believe on it. It goes from faith to faith to faith to, and that's how it's made its way all the way around the world. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God and salvation to everyone that believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And listen, but listen, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed. Now, the righteousness of God, God would have turned into the devil by now if he didn't do what he said and said what he did. Because the minute he quits doing what he says, all the light goes out. We know that ain't happened and it ain't going to happen. So the righteousness of God revealed includes doing and saying, and it goes from one faith to another faith because the true church is known by this. Those who are justified shall live by faith. The justified always, without fail, live by faith. That's the way it is. It, 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 it cannot be any other way. Hebrews 13 and verse 7. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews 13 and verse 7. Now, preacher's big on this, on the first part of it. But I'm going to minimize and soft pedal the first part of it, and I'm going to, I'm going to turn up the volume on the second part. Are you ready? Remember them which have the rule over you, and a man is not. The word rule is the same word, feed. The shepherd feeds the sheep. That's how he rules over them. He rules over them by the word of God, not by his own ideas and his own attitudes. We don't have any blue laws in this church. Man, you got enough to follow right here. And, and it ain't going to be according to what the preacher thinks you ought to do. It's going to be what the Holy Ghost wants you to do. If we set up rules of morality and you apply them to your life, we can't tell who's a Christian who ain't. But if we just say, everybody follow the Holy Ghost, and you come in here smelling like, looking like, acting like, dressing like the devil, we know what we got on our hands. That's too plain, ain't it? I can tell I said something wrong. Dear soul, walk with God. And if me and you agree, that means I'm walking with God too. And we're both walking with the Lord. And it's done by the Holy Ghost. Remember them that have the rule over you. They rule over you by preaching the word of God to you. That is, ministering the word, not using it, as Paul said, for their own gain. Listen, remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God. All right, here we go now. If a preacher ever preaches that first part, don't preach the second part, stick your hand up. And say, who's what? Follow? Wait a minute. Whose faith follow? Hmm. Can you see faith? Yeah. How do you see faith? It's evidenced by works. Faith without works is dead. Dear soul, a true man of God, and I hope I am one. If I don't, if I ain't, I want to be one. Is evidence by walking with God Himself and telling you what God says as He walks, and by His experience, He brings forth a living word. It's not just dull old, you know, Baptist doctrine. We're so tired of it, and 
if I hear about Calvin one more time, I'm going to scream. It's a living word because it's living in him. Because it's living in him by Christ living in him. And Christ is the word made flesh and dwelt among us. He's the living word. You're not to follow traditional, verbalized, religious rhetoric. You are to follow faith. I read it to you in Romans 1, 16, 17. Now I'm reading it to you here. Faith. Follow, from faith to faith. Do you want your kids to be saved? Well, don't say and do not. And this thing of, well, do what I say and not what I do. Man, you just made a mess out of things right there. Listen. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their manner of life, of their conversation. Dear soul, this thing is passed down through experience of grace. This dear mother, this dear wife, this dear daughter, this dear sister came down this morning and openly admitted to us that God just real, revealed to her this past week true salvation. He imparted to her salvation by grace through faith, and she saw it. She has life. She has light. She has understanding, perception, discernment, understanding. It's, it's glorious. It's like being brought out of the graveyard. And she, she comes to us and says, listen, it's an experience. I had a form of godliness. But this is an experience of God. Dear soul, if I was you this morning, I'd hold on. I'd hold on to God. I'd grab a hold of his skirt tail. I'd grab the horns of the altar. I, I would I'd cry out to God. I wouldn't give him an ounce of sleep. I, I would stay after him until I knew I had the experience of God in my soul and not just practice an old Baptist religion. Oh, my soul, folks. Philippians 4, 9. Philippians chapter 4. All I'm trying to tell you this morning is doing and teaching is not only the gospel, it's not only what Christ did, but it is the pattern of the true church. Philippians 4, 9. These things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen two words. Isn't that what we just read in Hebrews 13, 7? Whose faith follow. I don't want to be a Paulinian I don't, I, I don't want to be a Calvinist. I want to be a Christian. Right. Therefore, I can use Paul and Calvin or anybody else that has a, an experience of God. And they're so, sometimes you have to eat the chicken and spit out the bones. Because yeah. yeah. the only perfect man he's ever been is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Don't ever pin your salvation on any preacher's coattail. Always follow him only as he follows Christ. Listen, Philippians 4, 9. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me. Next word. Do. do. Now, did he say, don't do like I do, just do like I say? That's what the Pharisees said in Matthew 23 that sit in, in Moses' seat. Jesus said that which they tell you to observe, that do. But don't never do after what they do. If they're teaching you doctrine from the Bible, give it, consume it, eat it, wherever you can get it. And then put it in practice. But whatever you do, don't do like them. For they say and do not. And that man's works are abominable in the sight of God. 
And the Apostle Paul said, everything that you have heard and received and learned and seen in me, do. And he gives you the result. Will you tell me what the result of, of it is in verse 9, the last phrase? Anybody in here want the God of peace to be with them? You follow what you see of Jesus Christ and that only. Ezekiel 40 and verse 4, Brother Jamie and I was talking about this the other Sunday. Or Wednesday night, I think it was, wasn't it, Brother Jamie? Wednesday night, I think. Ezekiel 40 and verse 4. This is God talking to the preacher. About time we preach to the preachers, ain't it? Well, well, don't take your shoes off and get too comfortable. It's going to get down to you too. <laughs> the man is Jesus Christ. Ezekiel 40 and verse 4. And the man, that's Christ, in a pre-incarnation revelation, said unto me, that is unto Ezekiel, son of man, number one, Behold with thine eyes. Number two, hear with thine ears. But number three, be sure you set thine heart upon. How much? All, All that I shall show thee. Right? Yeah. So you, you need your eyes and your ears and your heart engaged when God is talking to you. Now listen to this. This is very explicit. For to the intent that I might show them unto thee art thou brought hither. There's a blessed passage in Acts 17 that we quote it all the time. He hath determined before the bounds of your habitation the bounds of your habitation, the times before appointed, it says. And the next verse said that you might no God. The hither right here. The hither right hither. God brought you right here. Today. You, you didn't live in some other day. Quit yearning for the past. You, you living right now. This is the best place and the best time for you to come to know God. Or either God's an idiot he said, your times and the bounds of your habitation, you got it right on the bullseye, are there that you might know the Lord. That's what that next verse says, so that you might know God. This is the best place for you to know God. And God said, I brought you here for this purpose. For to the intent that I might show them unto thee, art thou brought hither. What intent? For me to behold with my eyes, to hear with my ears, and set my heart upon. Keep thy blank with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. What? Heart. heart. Man believeth with the blank unto righteousness. Heart. heart. But confession is made by the mouth. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You can talk it. But I ain't convinced that any parent, and I've never seen one named Polly, knows what it's talking about, has any idea who Polly is, or what it means to say Polly wants a crack. All it's doing is imitating a sound, and then it knows it gets a goodie. That's the definition of the major portion of orthodox religion in America. All we do is make sounds that we know that God is pleased with and we want a goodie, i.e. to go to heaven. We don't even know who Polly is. Until you become a realized, confessed sinner. Not before me, not before this church, but before God Almighty who knows your heart. You ain't going to get your cracker. And honey, old, old white Georgia cracker telling you that too. <laughs> we ain't messing around this morning. This, this is intensive care. Have you noticed it? 
this major surgery going on here this morning. And I'm hoping and praying God give a blood transfusion for us things over with. Yeah. Amen. Listen, I got one more phrase to read. For the, to the intent that I might show them unto thee, art thou brought hither, declare how much? All. All that thou seest to the house of Israel, from faith to faith, that which you have seen and heard and, 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 and observed in me, do. I am going to tell you everything God told me. But it ain't going to be, now lay me down to sleep. Some little old fictitious, little old yakety yakety yak. Some little old silly, you know, cliches. I'm giving you my life. Because it's Christ's life in me. I will not stand before God Almighty. I did not want to be a preacher. I didn't run from it. I ain't one of them Jonas. When God said, oh, you call a preacher, I said, okay. But I didn't want to be. And this old, I still don't want to be. I didn't want a pastor. I want a big Cadillac and a radio station. I'm being honest. God took my life away from me. But he gave me that glorious life in Christ that I don't care anymore about all that other stuff. I just want to do what's right before God. And I'm telling you, before God Almighty, if we don't start doing what we're saying around here, God will shut this thing down. It's the truth. Because you ain't like Jesus if you say and don't do because that's not the pattern of the character of God in incarnation, and it sure ain't the pattern of God in regeneration. Last scripture, 1 Thessalonians 1. I know we got the table to go, and I know the restaurants are, you know, probably closing by now, and you ain't going to get nothing to eat, and you're all going to die, and, you know, under a tree, languishing, and you, you ain't never going to eat again. I got to watch on my arm, but I, I got, listen, I got something I got to tell you. 1 Thessalonians 1. Miss Ann laying in that bed watching this message, I better have something to say. Lord willing, this will finish it out. 1 Thessalonians 1, verse 4. And I can't get over verse 4. Yeah. Knowing, brethren, beloved, you're what? Wow. Why didn't he say knowing your, you know, denominational preference? There wasn't no denomination back then. He says, knowing your election of God. Now, how in the world can you tell me you can know a man's election of God? Doing and teaching. Listen. For, here's where I know. For, because our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power. 1 Corinthians 4.20, Brother Jamie. When you get it, read it out. 1 Corinthians 4.20. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. You got it, Brother Jamie? Yes, sir. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. You ever listen to Joel Osteen? You won't listen but once. I don't know what in the world a man's talking about. But that's the result of the harlot church. They just blah, 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 blah. Read my blog. You wouldn't need a football stadium-sized assembly if you was doing what you're saying because you have to be on a cross to do that. And that's what you're calling people to do. A call to the gospel is a call to die. Listen, our gospel, I know your election because our gospel came to you in power and ye became followers of us, comma, and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with a great deal of sorrow, no, with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. Wait a minute. 
wait a minute. You mean the Holy Ghost gave it to the Apostle Paul and those were with it? Yeah. He gave it to these of the Thessalonians. Yes. And now they turn around and give it to somebody else? Yes. From faith to faith. This is the pattern of the true church. This is the pattern of the character of God in the true church. And from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every faith, every place, your faith to Godward is spread abroad so that we need not speak. I don't even have to talk about y'all. They know your works. Did you know one of the things that God keeps saying to the churches of Asia in Revelation 3 and, was it 2 and 3? I know thy works. And you know what I preached at a Sovereign Grace Conference and it made all the preachers squirm. I said, when you get to heaven, God ain't going to judge you by your election. He's going to judge you by your, hold on to them, ladies. It's going to really make them squirm. Works! That's what he said. Read the Bible. The character of the true church is noted by doing and saying. Boy, they are preach a word, but they live the word. They don't say it and not do it, and they don't do it and not say it. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you. And here we go, Brother Jamie. You mentioned it this morning. And how ye turned... To God, that's half a turn. From idols, that's the rest of it. To serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Amen. The end. What would you hear this morning? Doing and teaching. What is so great about doing and teaching? That's the definition of the gospel of Luke. Number one, that's true. Number two, it's the definition of Jesus Christ's life, which itself is the gospel. Number two, it's the definition of the true church of God. And it is that by which God will judge all men on this earth. Because Pharisees in Moses' seat, people of long-term endurance in religion, are not necessarily born-again Christians. You don't look at that. Well, he's been over there at that church for 47 years. Well, I feel sorry for the people. Dear soul, that's not the criteria by which you, you, you judge whether the, whether the man knows God or not. It is, watch out for him because he says and does not. And that's abomination to God. It's antichrist. It's opposed to Christ. I wish we could learn what Antichrist was. We've had our minds so blinded. That's another. Here I'm getting into something else. I said I was going to quit. I am. That's what we've learned today, dear soul. Now, bottom line is the justified shall, no question about it, live by. Are you doing it? 